to our circle and salve women today we are going to discuss my newest article and that is why ask why shall we complicate things or shall we complicate the very question and honestly for me when it comes to asking this question it really pertains to when there are just times when there really shouldn't be a question as at all as to why and of course we are human by nature we are going to always ask why when we are inquisitive about certain things and we definitely need to pursue some answers and, and that's the part of exploration right that's the part of our love for knowing even more of in building up with our wisdom everything that we have we acquire in life it's all about building that knowledge building what we have to to feel complete in our mindset of just feeling as if we have acquired more today than we did yesterday and so we should ask questions we should ask why we should always pursue more of knowing but when i share with you these two stories that i have that i shared in my article main stories I really want to point out the times where it struck to me that sometimes you assume people already know why or that you've already gone over the why and perhaps they didn't hear it because it wasn't their why and that's why when things get complicated because then their justification of their actions on that follows with the what and how it ends up being a little bit more difficult the outcome to really take in because it's not the outcome you would have anticipated or wanted in, or desired so the very first one I have very shortly is I with my daughters it's sometimes they would go through things of course you know just being the going through your greatness sometimes you have to anticipate that you're going to have to explore somewhat the opposite because there's always going to be opposition to try and justify other people's actions they will try to lure you in to do what they do just so that they're not alone and i have said this many times to my own children and yet you know, understandably as a teacher and me having been a child myself growing up and developing and maturing I understand that sometimes it goes from one ear to another and I recall one time where one of my daughters had done something that in <laughs> if you've ever had daughters you know that uh, daddy's little girls will end up just really switching up into this 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 maturing mentality where they start to to explore the the what ifs and so in this case I remember my husband being very silently hurt and you know men typically don't admit it but in his actions just his silence really made me realize how hurt he was and it brought me back to the times when I behaved in a way that perhaps disappointed my own papa and I remember that there was a time where my one of my daughters had actually done something just one of her uh, the accounts and I re recall her her statement that really stuck with me is you know daddy always said what not to do and yet never really explained to me why and I really wanted to respond yes we have and yes you should know why but then it hit me it was like an epiphanal moment to realize that sometimes our why no matter how many times we speak of it no matter how many times we try to address it and convey it if it's not being heard it's going to go from one ear to another because their their desire to do something is going to outweigh the just the mindset of not doing it or just any reasons of why it you they shouldn't do it and it just becomes more exciting more thrilling to go well what if I do this and you know what's on the other side of this and what really are the risk and I just it just hit me at that given point it was such an epiphanal moment to for me to realize as a mother that sometimes no matter how you try to explain the why no matter how much you try to convey in a way where you 
you think that they're going to own it. If it is not their why, then they're going to justify it with their own actions and they're going to do whatever they want to do because it's in that moment where then they have to discover for themselves as to as to what was on the other side and you know you really hope that your children never end up running into an issue where they can't go back they can't take something back they can't undo a situation to a point where you know it may taint their their reputation or their life or their their just perspective of life for forever and so I'm very thankful that my children as their their greatness definitely exceeded any of the things that they want to explore in life and yet it at that given moment it hit me that there's no such thing as perfection you can work toward excellence and and just having my daughter state that it made me realize that no matter what there's going to be a time where this moldy masterpiece will then decide to veer a different direction mold in a different way and then find out for themselves whether or not it was something that they wanted to do or become or be a part of and then they will then have that power within them to decide to mold back and again you hope that it's not something where a piece ends up being miss missing and then they can't bring themselves back my other story that I shared with you was a confrontation that I had, just a verbal confrontation I had in the classroom when a student had came in tardy into the class. I was teaching a combination of a 6th, 7th, and 8th grade math class at this time. And of course, you uphold that no excuse policy of, hey, we come here, we honor ourselves, we honor our learning, we, you know, we honor our family by being here on time and we're getting ready to start as soon as the class has settled in and the bell has rung. We're ready to go and I recall a student coming in tardy and, and it, at first it was like okay let's not have that happen again by I believe the second time I don't recall ever waiting until the third time to address it but when I did address it I was really taken by surprise by being questioned as to why why is it such a big deal and their justification was pointing out that another student actually was doing the same thing all the time and I've never addressed it well at that given point, it made me feel a, a little bit on a, you know, a side of, do I give this student power by just saying, you know, you're right, go ahead and take a seat. Or do I explain to this child that this other student that they were speaking of had some some allowability or something written as a guidelines that allowed the student to come in tardy and this was something that was that, that was a non-disclosure so for me at this point I was like no I'm not going to share that because that is the student's privacy and, and I know better professionally and so I had to take it in and just stand there and question and I was able to quickly come back to the very act the very behavior and saying it doesn't matter about the other students I'm talking to you what are your expectations for yourself and what is it that you want to uphold yourself by is it okay for other people to be tardy in 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 your mind so that it makes it okay for you or should you set the example for everyone else knowing that you are of your greatness at all times and in whatever in more or less words that I had spoken it was important for me to address it in a way where I really wanted to bring back the behavior and have them own their why rather than justify it with anybody else's why and because it, it was it was to no one's business whatever else was happening with other students to me it was more important of what are your actions how are you upholding yourself and how are you respecting your learning environment and so you know I, she had really hit me when the student had said, I feel as if you are being racist. And, and I mentioned this, Michael, that did not, the, the racist part didn't really, I, I just didn't really affect me in the way people probably would have thought so, because I already 
just refer to the picture and on my desk and suggesting mm, no try again and you know me being married to predominantly a black man and who I call international because he's many bloods and then also for myself being a minority and a female and I always like to think of it as like if I ever allowed that to even get to me that would be two strikes on my part and so it was like no try that again but what really hit me it's where it, I really felt like I was stuck on is her word feel and to me it had hit my heart because whenever a student speaks of something that has to deal with an emotion then I know that their emotion is involved and now I have to be emotionally involved to then get them at that that level of compassion of knowing that okay this person is emotionally affected and I need to address this piece and so when she had stated that, that is what bothered me. And honestly, I will say that it bothered me for many years because there are certain words that your children or your students speak and that they don't even realize will stick with you for a quite a long time, perhaps maybe even a lifetime, you know? And so for me, it was like, wait, how did I make you feel that way? And I was not able to respond to that because again, out of my respect for the other student that they were referring to to justify their own actions, I just needed to bring it back to having them own their own. And so my thoughts on why ask why, there are times where you should. When you feel that your rights are being compromised, when you feel that you, are, that you are not feeling safe or that you are not feeling treated in a manner of respect and in the way that you, sh you feel that you should be addressed, then you know, for, for all the right reasons, yes, you have every reason to ask why. And yet I would always ask myself, before I go judging anyone else, I have to then reflect on my own actions and ask myself, why am I being addressed at this time? Why is this being an issue? So that then I can sit and stand there and ponder and reflect on my own actions. And there are just some things in life that, as I tell my students, and I've gotten a pretty good at being able to, to address this or state this to my students it's is that there are just some things it, it's so much easier to do the to do well to do the good thing than the opposite it you work harder at doing the just doing the bad oh gosh it's a strong word doing things that are not right than just doing the right this is why we make a routine you know we get up we brush our teeth we go and take a shower and we get dressed and you know there are certain routines that we do in life because we know that life is easier in the manner that you are doing good for yourself and those around you and that your day is smooth knowing that you are creating peace within yourself to know that you have followed the right path to getting started in the right track and it is the same manner that you come in into a room there are certain expectations expectations. I tell everyone it's different when you go to a ballpark. It's different when you go into a library. It's different when you go into a wedding versus if you go into a funeral. There are certain expectations within yourself that you should know you should uphold because it's, it's a matter of protocol and it's more of an ethical protocol where you know that there this is what I need to do so that everyone around me is in peace and I'm with, in peace within myself. And so when people ask why on, in certain times where it's already a given if you already know you know not to lie not to murder not to you know commit adultery not to covet not, just so many aspects of life right and even, even obeying your mother and father and I believe that's the fifth commandment it is just to, of course love God first one it is just the very thing that you should not question because it's in your heart to know this is the right thing. Why ask why? So beyond that, yeah, ask away. Ask so that you can keep growing and that you can keep making sense of the world. But when you walk into a library, why should you even question how to walk in? When you walk into a formal dining, why should you even question how to behave when you know you walk into a ballpark why should you question that people are cheering and so there are just some questions not needed to be asked as when when you're dealing with the why 
it is really set up for times when you need to ponder, when you need to do the metacognitive, when you're really thinking about your thinking. But when it's on the surface and it's, it's something that you should follow because it's the right thing to do, this is when I have to stop as a parent, as a teacher, and stand there and think to myself, why are we wasting time? And I don't want to present it in that way, but that's where my mind and my heart go. And it's like, you're asking me to address something that is a given. It is a given because it is a way to uphold peace. It is a way to uphold just the way we care ourselves and how we bring ourselves forth in life so that everyone around us is understanding that there are I would say social ethics, there are moral ethics, there are academic ethics, whatever component in life that you are addressing, there are, you, have, you have ethics to uphold to make sure that the world can trust you, that you know your part, and that you can trust them, and that you know they know their part. And I honestly believe that when you start to ask too many whys, this is when we start to create havoc, when all of a sudden we're starting to ask the unnecessary. And because when, if we were in a Socratic moment and we were asking because we wanted to learn more about the world, that's different than all of a sudden creating some type of just friction where you're just asking because you want to delve into something that need not be asked and all of a sudden it's just the answer of just do it <laughs> right in the nike commercial i really think it evolved from that it's like sometimes you just do what you do because you know it's the right thing and so those are my thoughts so i want to end it with my story of sakile where I remember when I was teaching science, it was eighth grade science, and she had stated to me when I asked her, okay, because she was talking, you know, all right, time to get this done before class is over. And she's like, you know, with her beautiful smile and, and glistening eyes, I'm only doing this because you're asking me to. And sometimes in life, that's the best answer. If you're not feeling threatened, if you're feeling like it's for the better, of the it for the good and for the better of those around why not you are gaining something not losing and so everybody wins and i hope that i've sent a positive message today that save your your whys for when you really need to ask otherwise just be thankful that some of some things in life don't have to be questioned we just do the right thing in the words of my mother, God bless us all. Have a great rest of your week. Keep loving you. Keep embracing life. And save your energy for the joys and in in the great moments in your life. Don't try to make it too difficult because life itself is going to do that already for you. So just try to make it as easy as you can when you can. We'll see you next time.